the things that I love, a concept that you share in your book around conscious living. Mm. And there's it's unconscious things happening and beliefs and things that, you know, all the muck that's happened. The muck. I yeah. Agree. And, and, you know, we're trying to move forward, but mm. for whatever reason, we're, you know, we're sabotaging ourselves yeah. and it's... We're stuck in the muck. We're stuck in the muck. Mm. And it's the difference between conscious versus unconscious living. Yeah. I, I, just, I love that so much. So I, I would say most of us have lived years automatically. Yeah. Um, years getting up, getting ready the same way, going to work the same way, doing the, reacting the same way to people, getting defensive the same way, rejecting feedback the same way, and then thinking life somehow is going to be different. Yeah. Life is only delivering ourselves. Over and over again, life is delivering who we are. I heard that years ago, decades ago, and it just becomes clearer and clearer every year. Mm. The more I question how automatic am I being in this moment, how reactive am I being this moment, how can I be conscious to this moment? So that whole chapter is about how to become more conscious. Yeah, and what I love about your book is because it actually helps you unpack that because we can hear that in so many different places, mm. but okay, well, how do I actually consciously live? Yeah, you know, how exactly. do I know what are the unconscious things that are going on yes. for me? And the book walks you through that. It's just so it's much of it. Well, as I said, I have said many times, being told the answers within is super unhelpful if you look in <laughs> and you just feel like crap. <laughs> like I used to look in and feel afraid. It's like, man, that's dark. And yeah. <laughs> Everyone should just back quietly out of that room and shut the door. Let's just pretend that didn't Let's happen. Just, yeah. Let's just seal that up and never discuss it again. Yeah. So me looking inside was not a great place to look. So I wrote the book the way I wished I'd been taught yes. when I began the journey, that there are ways of looking within. We can train our minds and our consciousness to start taking care of ourselves, yes. to be on our team, yes. to be excited about us, to have our self-talk be on our team, to have self-talk that's kind and loving and yes. compassionate and thoughtful and into us and encouraging us. Yes. And that's possible. And it's a feedback we're getting from thousands of members now as they're yeah. starting to do it. That that's it's, so wonderful. It's possible. You know, they're opening up. That is so wonderful. Um, every time I hear a story like that, I don't, I'm don't. i never getting tired of hearing those stories. No. It's been 16 years now and I'm still Yes. I think I'm more thrilled today mm. because I'm recognising, um, I just felt emotion then, I just felt the emotion of it. I'm recognising more every year that the vulnerability it takes yeah. and the willingness it takes to not act like we've got it all together, mm. the strength it takes to say, you know what, I'm tired of saying I'm okay and not feeling it. I'm yeah. just going to say I'm not okay and still be accepted. Yeah. That takes a lot of courage. That takes a lot of vulnerability. That takes humanity. This message keeps coming through. If we deny our own humanity of our flaws, we're never going to make the progress. Mm. But who are we safe admitting flaws to? Who are we safe saying out loud, I don't feel okay I'm about me. I, I, yes. I don't know how to make sense of this. I look inside and it's like we should shut the door like you did. That's just, that's just, Sharon, I'm with you. Let's let me go into that dark dungeon again. That's horrible. So to be able to speak up in knowing all of that and still speak up and say, as people do in our community, every hour of every day, I am worth being heard when I say, this is hurting. Yeah. I am, I deserve to be able to say that and be safe saying that and to be respected saying that and to have compassion come my way. Then, of course, it's up to me to do something about it. The, the point of the book is not just to express our flaws and our mistakes and our vulnerabilities and keep getting attention for it. That's certainly not the message mm. of the book. But there is a space in the beginning of this journey to be completely validated on where we're at. Because, again, this message of we can't generate the change we want until we can address where we're at. Yes. And addressing it is not, yes, I feel really stuck. It's I'm feeling really stuck and have someone reflecting that back accurately. To know we're safe doing that. And everyone in our community, thousands of people around the world mm. are doing that for each other every day. It's beautiful. Every minute of every day. Yeah, I'm seeing literally. that going on, the kindness. Yeah. I feel safe in that community knowing I can be flawed, that I can make a mistake, that I can have a setback that's known publicly. And this amazing group of thousands of people, men and women around the world, are going to go, hey, we're beside you, we're with you. 
It's okay to be human. There's your humanity right up in front and we're with you. There's this wonderful story of um, a tradition in Africa with the Maasai, parts of the Maasai tribes, not all of them, where if someone makes a mistake in Western world, what do we do? We shun them, we shame yes, them, we, shame. We, we do everything we can to Judge, remind them. Put them down, yeah. yeah. You better know your place. Yes. You're flawed. We've seen it. You're not okay. You're yes. out. Yes. They go the opposite direction. You make a mistake there. They come around you and remind you for three days wow. all the wonderful ways that you've been loving, you've been thoughtful, you've been compassionate, wow. you've been you've been there for people, you've been an important part of this community, and they heal together. This community we're building to mm. me is I took it from that is metaphor that, all yeah. those years ago. That's the space we need to create in the middle of all this shaming and tearing down and mm. finding flaws and clickbaits and yes. you know, headlines designed to shock. Yes. <sighs> Tall poppy syndrome, all of that. Mm. We need a safe harbour more than ever. Yes. So to me, living consciously is creating that safe harbour, not just for myself but for others yeah. and having others being okay that I am in their safe harbour too. My message is who would you call at 2 a.m. you're in trouble? Just know I'm on your list. Yes. And I know you're on my list. Yes. And that's how it's meant to be. Mm. It's meant to be given because we share humanity. You're in trouble at 2 a.m. It's not I have a list of three people I can call. It's this community can be called upon. Yes. I'm in trouble. I need you. Yes. I don't need you right now to judge me or to find point or out to what I know what I'm not I doing. Up. Or, yes. <laughs> it's to be with me. Yes. And to be and remind me that I I I go beyond. I'm defined way beyond this one moment when I'm not at my best. Or I've been perceived as not at my best. Yes. Or I've been misunderstood. I am bigger and we are mm. bigger than that. Mm. So this community in terms of conscious living is, well, how do we bring that to life in a very real way? Not yes. in a theoretical way, not Completely. according to the and research. I think that's what I love about it. Yeah, it's we're like, doing it. Yeah, we're not just talking about it. No. We're doing it. No. And I think through that we give people the strength or, you know, really we give each other the strength to then finally maybe face some of the beliefs that aren't serving us mm. and face up to some of the rigidity that's been holding us back yeah. or face up to the fact that maybe we're, there are things that are important to us that we've never really fought for. Well, you've said there's a lot to pick out from what you said. The first mm. thing is let's challenge our beliefs. Yeah. So I used to hold dear the belief that I couldn't trust people. That's mm. just turned 180. I think 180 is the opposite. Yes, 180. <laughs> Maths in public, my strength. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. Somewhere over there. I've moved to, well, that's just not true anymore. But I had to challenge that belief consciously for a few yeah. years before I was able to arrive at a different place. But I had to be willing to test it. Mm. I had to be willing to challenge it. I had to be willing to say, well, is this really true? And according to my experience until then, yes. My yes. experience of the world, because I was experiencing myself, was that was true. So changing that, that was a challenge. But until I was willing to question it, it was never going to change. It was never going to change. The time was going to pass and I was still going to feel just as, suck and, just as stuck and just as lonely. So that's the first part of it. Then we need to start looking at, well, what is playing out in my world? What mm. am I experiencing? And there's always this tension between rigidity and permeability this rigidity between versions of toxicity that's so cool i love that language <sighs> first just, time i ever heard that was chapter two yes first time i ever heard it yeah so we're all living in this dichotomy and swimming on the ends of it within the two extremes of the structure and this includes culture and society and businesses and organizations families and individuals we're living this dichotomy we're either we're experiencing a lot of rigidity and the toxicity is in the rigidity or experiencing a lot of permeability and I'll go into that and there's toxicity in that. And mm. swimming in between is consciousness. Mm. This is the automatic and this mm. is the consciousness. Mm. So the extremes is this is the way I was taught. So the rigidity is my way would be exampled yep. by my way is the right way. Uh, bureaucracy matters. This is how we've always done it. Uh, I write, I'm right, you're wrong. There's black and white thinking. There's absolutism. Yes. There's con there's a lot of conservative shutdownness. It's you don't cry in public. Be a real man. Mm. It's those types of mm. expressions. Mm. That's the narrative around rigidity. Mm. Mm. Then the opposite extreme in the dichotomy is the permeability. Some people have been raised where anything goes, where you're right simply because you're so special, because you're perfect in every single way. You don't have to change. Well, actually, you kind of do because only your mother sees you that way, but that's, 
you're in your 30s, perhaps you need to relook at that, is the permeability of that has to be torn down no matter what, even Mm. though we don't have a good answer or it's this very progressive and I, I call myself progressive, but it's an extreme progressiveness where whatever was is bad. Yes. Whatever has been has got to go. Yes. How dare you tell me how to live my life? How dare you try to limit me? And both of them have anger mm. and mm. holding on really tight. Now, yeah. you wherever you are, you will have a preference to what you just heard. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a time and place for that. But they won't be the same. Two viewers yes. will be on different sides Completely. of this and yeah. they'll be looking across the canyon going, that's wrong. You're wrong. You're yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and, they're just, and they're just firing past each other. Mm. So that's the automatic. And we're all raised in one dichotomy, one end of the dichotomy mm. of the other. All of us are raised with more rigidity or more permeability. Mm. That tends to be very rarely do I meet. I know one family that probably, based on me knowing them for 16, 17 years, 18 years, was raised somewhere more in the mm. balance and the consciousness, mm. which is amazing. Yeah. The middle ground is seeing that the inflexibility and the toxicity of this is what we're doing automatically. The yes. moment we externalise and go, that's the way it has to be, or we think it's about control or it's about pulling something down, we're probably contributing to the toxicity. Mm. Probably. So it's a good way of knowing, oh, I'm in the toxicity right now. I went to blame. Yes. Or I went to tear something down or I went to uh, point out flaws in a, in a big thing that's going on It's exciting to people or I went to defend a status quo for no other reason I've always defended it. They've always defended it, Now, that yeah. doesn't make us wrong. It makes us automatic. Mm. The question is if we want to progress, okay, I've done it, that was automatic, I'm okay with that. Or I've done it, that was automatic. I think I might have a go at seeing something here a little different. Yes. I might have a go at going into the, you know, it's rough, rougher waters of maybe I don't know. Mm. Maybe I can loosen up around my righteousness. Maybe I don't have to emotionally react right now. Maybe I can question this in terms of compassion rather than judgment. Maybe I can come with a softer focus rather than the hardness of certainty. Maybe there is a middle ground here where I can swim and there's more room for others. Yes. Maybe I could do that. And then, of course, the first time I did that, I went, well, yeah, that's all lovely, but I don't know how. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. So then I needed to keep learning. Okay, so how do you do that? But at least to be asking those questions, it's just softening the edges a little bit. Yeah. It's just, okay, well, that's how it's been and that's how I think it should be because that's how it's been. But is it making me happy? That's my ben- That's my benchmark. Yeah. If it's making you happy, stay there. Not full. But if it's not making you happy, you don't have great relationships, you don't feel that life is for you and with you, probably you're stuck in the rigidity. Yeah. Because what's to defend? Yeah. What's to defend? That's the way I've always done it. I know best. Yeah, great. And if it's making you really happy and those around you feel loved, you should carry on. But if it's not, I don't know what you're defending right now. I don't know what you're fighting for other than the right to stay rigid. Yes. Rigidity is what tears, it really tears through organisations, it tears through Mm. families, Mm. and it tears through heart space. That rigidity, it just hardens the heart Mm. to new perspectives or for the space for, I do this whole thing in the next, in Chapter 3 on differentiation. In a space of rigidity, no one can break free or breathe out. And be who they are. No one can find the space to be differentiated and be unique and not be judged, critiqued, assessed, observed. Yeah. Having a running commentary on them. Your families do this. Families do this. Oh, I didn't think you were into that. Instead of you're into that, tell me about it. Yes. Tell me what you're loving. You know, the the rigidity is in the really Mm. and the and the gentleness and compassion is in the really. Tell Mm. me more. Mm. And just that one word, the same word, done with the compassionate tone that's opening a lot that's 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 opening a lot more doors a lot more hearts than really (laughs) yeah completely yeah and I love that in in that space so many members are sharing with us their uh someone wrote I think she actually shared this in the book one of the stories is that she feels like she's being herself for the Mm. first time yeah in 40 something years and I think in a story she says something like 
being me is fucking awesome. Oh, that's so good. And it's, <laughs> and it's so good. That is outstanding. Because I think, you know, there is that fear of, well, there, it is a bit of a scary journey, you know, yeah. to question some things you believe. Well, here's the thing. If everyone agrees with it, you're not doing it. Yeah, I love that. If everyone goes along with it, you're probably not doing it. Yeah. Because you're probably still stuck in the rigidity of what was going yeah. on. So yes. that's chapter three. It's how do you know you're differentiating yourself? You're probably getting critiqued. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably getting if lots If you're not of, rocking some boats. If you're not rocking the boats, it's not differentiation because yeah. it still recognises the sameness of the status quo that you're within. Mm. So in that chapter, in chapter three in Tribal Cycle, we're really starting to unpack, well, this balance, this stress again, this this permeability and the rigidity, and then the second stressor is do I belong or do I differentiate? 